Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, here to praise our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Mary went to that tomb extremely early, as the text tells us, while it was still dark. See, when they took Jesus' body down from the cross, it was only a couple hours away from the beginning of the Passover, the beginning of the Sabbath, I mean. And on the Sabbath, you're not allowed to do any work, including burying a body or preparing it for long-term decay. There were two rich people there who were unsuspecting people in the, in the background that you didn't know about until there they are taking Jesus down from the cross and putting him in a fresh tomb. Joseph of Arimathea, who was a Sadducee, and Nicodemus, a Pharisee. These two secret followers of Jesus decided that they would take down this body and put him into a fresh tomb, not in the mass grave with all the other criminals. But they had to hurry, and so they quickly took that body, they tucked him into this new tomb, they wrapped him quickly with some spices, did a quick rush job, and then closed the tomb. And then there was nothing over that Saturday. And then as soon as she could, Mary got up and she went to that tomb because she wanted to do something for her Lord. See, Mary was still running from things that morning. Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. And Jesus had come to her and he had told her that her sins were forgiven. He had given her hope that her life wasn't over, that her reputation wasn't done. That in God, she had the opportunity for a new life of forgiveness and an eternity with God. And Jesus had told her so many things about what the kingdom of God was like and she loved him for it. She followed him every day since that day she met him. But when he died, it seemed like all of that was gone. And her past came back as it chases on her, telling her that she wasn't forgiven, that he was lying, that maybe it wasn't true, that he didn't mean everything that he said. All of that fear was chasing her. All of the pain at seeing this man that she loved so much dead. And she didn't want to mourn his passing. Not yet, not so soon. It all happened so quickly. So Mary was running from a lot that morning. She was afraid. She was afraid that her Lord was truly dead. Peter and John were also running. Running from a lot of things. They wanted to know what had happened when Mary came back and told them that there was no body there. I don't know what happened. I don't know who took him. Peter and John go sprinting towards that tomb, wanting to figure out what happened. They were running to find out. They hated the unknown, so they're running away from that. And they also both, I'm sure, are carrying their own guilt. <coughs> All the disciples had abandoned Jesus. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when he warned them to prepare their hearts so they wouldn't fall into temptation, he told them to pray with him. He reminded them again and again, the Son of Man is going to be delivered. The Son of Man is going to be delivered. The Son of Man is going to suffer and die and rise again after three days. Do not lose heart. Do not be afraid. And they scattered. And Peter, most of all, who had vehemently told Jesus, I will never deny you, had denied Jesus three times with oaths by swearing, I do not know that man. And Jesus looked at him at that moment and he went out and wept bitterly. So both of them were running from some serious things. They had much to be sorry for. They were much, there was much for them to be afraid of. Again, their teacher that they had followed for three years had been killed. But now his body was gone. What are you running from this morning? 
And maybe a better way to ask that question is, where are you running to? See, in a lot of ways, Mary and Peter and John were running to their own graves. Because of their fear, because of their lack of trust and their doubt, they were acting as if they were going to run to their own destruction and that the world was over, there was no hope, that everything was lost and there was nothing they could do. They ran in panic. They didn't know. They were afraid. Running to their own graves as if that was their end destination. My question for you is, what are you running to? Are you also running to your grave? As you run away from your responsibilities, you feel are too great this morning? You can't be what God has called you to be, what God has put in your life. All these wonderful blessings surrounding you, your family and friends and those that the Lord has given you, are you as faithful to them as you should be? And is that kind of scary? That responsibility that you have a hard time carrying? Are you running from that this morning? Are you frustrated at your job? You're, you're running away from the expectations there and everything that's expected from you? You can't be as patient. You can't be as faithful as you'd like to be. And you're tired of that too? Are you running from your past? What have you done? What is telling you that you will go to that grave and you will stay there? What are you carrying? Whatever you're running from this morning, don't let it tell you that you are running to your grave. And don't fill those, those feelings of lostness and afraidness with foolish things like the desires of this world and things in this life that are so temporary and just leave you feeling worse off. Don't try to get more power. Don't try to solve the world's problems with money. Don't just spend all this time on leisure activities hoping that maybe you'll forget about it a little bit longer and then all those terrible feelings of identity and future and what's going to happen after death will just disappear. Don't just run away in fear and think it'll all just magically disappear. Don't do that either. Because all those things eventually are just different paths to that same grave. You can, just as Mary, Peter, and John found out that morning, know and live in the grace and the beauty of the reality of Jesus' resurrection. What did Mary find there? Nothing at first. And then as Peter and John came, they looked in, and there they saw the burial cloths, and the ones for Jesus' head were folded in a different spot than the others. And you must be thinking, they're scratching their head and thinking, if someone stole this body, why would they take that off his head and fold that over there and leave the other ones over there? And they just carried off a naked body? It would be strange at the very least. And we even hear from, from the gospel writer what John did. As soon as he looked in, he waited for Peter. Peter went in and he saw this and the other gospel tells us he's still confused. He's not quite sure yet. But John looks in and what does he do? He believes. He remembers the word of his God, his Savior, that said, I will rise. He believed. He's alive. Mary took some more convincing and I almost think she seems a little bit ditzy at this point because there she is by the tomb and she looks in again and there are two angels in there dressed in dazzling white and they say to her, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for Jesus. As if two angels sitting on the tomb is not something you know, extraordinary, but I'm sure with all her tears and everything, she's so distraught, she's so afraid, she's so filled with grief, she can barely think at this point. And so even though they respond to her as if everything is normal, yeah, there's two angels that just randomly appeared here. That's normal. She's still lost. And she turns and it says Jesus is there, standing there, and she asks him the same thing, where did you put him? 
thinking he was the gardener, please just tell me where you put him and I will go get him myself. I don't know how Mary would have done that, but she was determined. And then all Jesus had to say was her name. Mary. All the fear. All of the past. All of her thoughts that maybe Jesus didn't tell the truth. Maybe he was just sugarcoating. Maybe he was just telling me what I wanted to hear. All of those thoughts disappear. She stops running away as there is her Lord and she clings to him because she loves her Savior and he is alive. He told the truth even about this impossible thing that he came back to life. That just doesn't happen, but it does around Jesus. Things don't stay dead around him. So what does that reality look like for you then? The same truth that Jesus did not stay dead, but he is alive. This is what that means. You're not running to a grave anymore. You don't have to think that my life is just one day at a time until eventually I get to the last one. It may come by accident. It may come quicker than I expect or it may happen when I've lived a full life and I've played out every single one of my days. But that is not where you are ending up. That's not where you are running. That is not the goal of your life is to live a good life and then die and rot in the ground. But just like Jesus, you know that that is just the beginning. You don't live this life just to die anymore. Because the whole reason Jesus came to suffer and die, the whole reason Jesus lives is for you. He has loved you from eternity and he will love you through eternity. Jesus came to suffer and die for your sins so that you would know when his tomb was empty that your sins were gone, that nothing is too great to keep you in that tomb. That just as he lives, you also will live. Just as he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though they die. What an amazing reality. That means you can run out of that grave. And you will run out of that grave. When the last day comes, whether it's before or after you die, Jesus will return with all his angels, in all his might, with a loud trumpet call, and he will call to life all the dead, and we will stand before him. We will run out of our graves. And those who believe in him will have a new and beautiful body remade completely without any of the aches and pains you deal with today, without any of the fears that you are holding this morning, any of the burdens that you carry. All of that will be gone. And you will run. And as, as it says in the Old Testament, you will leap like like calves jumping out of the stall, just like right now in spring when they're finally free to go out and they're bouncing around like crazy. That'll be you, no matter how many knee replacement surgeries you've had. You will leap. You will jump. You will rejoice. Because Christ has guaranteed you life everlasting. Don't run to your grave anymore. Don't live like you're going to die. Live like you're going to live forever. Follow the one who kept all his promises, who lives eternally, and will come back to bring you with him forever. Run out of that grave. Live in that beautiful resurrection truth. Amen.